So we're going to look at integrating and differentiating things that are not base E. And we're going to briefly look review on how to solve things that are not base E. So here for this problem, we have a half-life. And we're starting out with one gram. So we're going to put one in front. Well, one times anything doesn't change it. It's a half-life. So that means in our parentheses, we have a half. And we're dealing with a half-life of carbon-14 being this. Meaning, after 5,715 years, only half of the carbon-14 is remaining. So, we're wondering, after how much will, how many, if I can talk here, sorry, how much will be left after 10,000 years? Well, the exponent has to be the number of half-lives. Well, really, you have to take your total time divided by your half-life of 5,715 to be able to figure out the number of half-lives. Well, for our problem, our total time was 10,000. And so then we could put that in. We could use our calculator on this, and we would get about 0.3 grams. So you started out with one gram. Basically, it's 30% left after 10,000 years. So as a refresher, you could go ahead and take a logarithm of base A and rewrite it as natural log of X over the natural log of A is how we kind of did it back in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc. But remember, by dividing the natural log of A is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's what we have here. And this form will be typically more helpful when we're in calculus here. Also, to review your definition of a logarithm to be able to go from the logarithmic form to your exponential form properties of your logarithm here so you should be all familiar with that stuff so to just solve a problem like this we're going to probably have to use logarithms with your variable and the exponent so we can take the log of each side i'm choosing a net or a common log you could have used a natural log it would not make a difference <clears throat> Now you have an exponent after log, you could put that exponent in front. Now you just have your variable x multiplied by something. So to get x by itself, all you'd have to divide do is divide by that thing. So now we have our calculator ready form. If you needed the approximation, you could always type that in your calculator. Over here, we could go from the log form to the exponential form. So we could take our base of 2, swing it over, hits the exponent, or that negative 4 up as your exponent. Uh, well, you should remember that a negative exponent puts it down in the bottom. And then that just is 1 16th. Remember, if you're starting out with like this, with the variable after log, your answers have to make sure causing whatever's after your log to be positive. So... In this case, if you take 1 16th and plug it in for your x over here, it does end up being positive. So let's go ahead and look at this. If you have a base of a, remember that you could rewrite a as just e to this power. Because remember, e and ln undo each other. And so that's what I have in the box is really just a. And we know how to the, do the derivatives of e to a power. So that's why it's sometimes nice to think of um, this right here in terms of this, because we can easily do what we've done before for taking our derivatives. So knowing that your original function is this, you could rewrite as this here. You know then that if you do your derivative of this, it's still going to be that original function right here. But this natural log of a comes from, because you're doing the chain rule, derivative of the exponent, well, it's natural log of a, which is just a number. It's going to hang out there. And then you'd have to multiply it by the net derivative of u, and that's what your du over dx is. So that's what we're dealing with here. Now, keep in mind that e to the natural log of a u is really your original of a to the u. So this is really a to the u, natural log of a, and du over dx, which we have right here. So another way to look at it is derivative of a to the power is a to that power times the natural log of your base times the chain rule derivative of the exponent. As we look down here, remember 
this is a log of not base E, it's log base A. So you could rewrite it like this here using your change of base formula. So if you're doing your derivative of this, you're still going to have that 1 over A in front. Then it's 1 over what's after your log, so 1 over U. And then the DU over DX is the chain rule. So in general, when you're doing the log derivative of log base A of U, it's 1 over the natural log of your base of A times 1 over whatever is after your log times DU, which is the deriv chain rule, derivative of the inside. So if we're doing our derivative here, you could just follow that rule and you'd say, well, that's going to be the natural log of my base times the original function times the derivative of the exponent, which would be 1. Now, keep in mind that if you wanted to, you could rewrite your 2 as e to the natural log of 2 still raised to the x, which <coughs> is really x natural log of 2. So when you do your derivative, it's still going to be this, which we know is this here, times the derivative of the exponent. Well, the derivative of this is just this here. So if you want to switch it to back to base E, you can. If you want to just use the idea that derivative of 2 to a power is 2 to that power times the natural log of your base, which is that 2. Here, if we use that idea, derivative of 2 to a power is still going to be 2 to that power. But then you have to have the natural log of your base. And you have to do the chain rule, derivative of the exponent, which would be a 3. For the most part, like this here, we'd put the 3 in front of your natural log, and we'd call it quits. Or, if you wanted, you could take your 3 up as the exponent and go natural log of 2 cubed, which is an 8, times 2 to the 3x. Either one of these last two would be acceptable. Looking at this one here, Remember, there's no base written. That's assumed to be base 10. So you could think of it as log base, or 1 over natural log of 10, times the natural log of this. Well, if you're doing your derivative, you'd still have that 1 over the natural log. Doing the derivative of your natural log would be the 1 over the cosine, times the chain rule, derivative of the inside. Well, derivative of cosine, you know, is negative sine. Well. We could multiply these last two things together, and we get this. And you should know that sine over cosine is tangent. So we could write our answer as this. So here we have e, which is a number, to a power. And you should know that e to a power is this. Here we have x raised to a number. Remember, e is a number. Well, if you have x to a number, like an x cubed, you know you just do the power rule. Same idea here. We put the exponent in front, decrease our exponent by 1. So that would be your derivative. But what do you do when you have a variable raised to a variable like this? Well, this is where we can do logarithmic differentiation. So we could apply a natural log to the left side and therefore apply a natural log to the right side. Well, on the right side, you have an exponent after logarithm, so that exponent of x you could put down in front. So we've not done any calc yet. All we've done is just use algebra. Now we could actually go ahead and do our derivative. So you know the derivative of natural log of y would be 1 over y times the chain rule, the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of y is dy over dx, or y prime. Well, over here on the right side, we actually have to go ahead and do product rule, because we have variables times variables. So you do the derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, plus the first, times the derivative of the second, 1 over x. Well, here at the end, x times 1 over x, you know, is 1. And here, timesing by 1 doesn't change it, so it's just natural log of x. 
over here if you wanted you could leave it as is or you could just go y prime over y when you're looking for your derivative you want your y prime your derivative by itself so we'd have to get rid of dividing by y so we multiply both sides by y now we want our derivative only with x's in it so we don't want this y so you gotta think oh well y that's my original problem all i'd have to do is take that x to the x power and plug it in down here now that's my derivative dy over dx only with x's in so we know the derivative of a to the power well what about the integral well the derivative of a to the power still has a to that power so when you integrate a to the power you're still going to have that a to the power when we were doing derivative, we multiplied by the chain rule, giving us natural log of a. But remember, when you're integrating, you have to undo that. So that's why we have 1 over the natural log of a in front, because we have to undo that natural log of a. And being an indefinite integral, you have to have plus c. So for the most part, when you're integrating a to a variable, it's 1 over the natural log of a, which is your base times your original function plus c. So we're going to have to have our original function here. We have to go 1 over the natural log of our base, and then we'd have to have plus c. Now, if you wanted to write this first part as one fraction, 2 to the x on top with the natural log of 2 on the bottom, you could do that. Over here, you just have 3 times something. So when you're integrating, you might as well just pull that 3 in front. So now we can go ahead and integrate this. We can leave that 3. Oh, well, let's see. As we look at this, we're going to have to have it's 5 to the power. So we'll have to have 1 over the natural log of 5. And you're going to have your original function with a plus c because it's an indefinite integral. But remember, we're going to have to undo the derivative of our exponent. The derivative of our exponent is an 8. So to undo that, we'd have to have a 1 over 8 hanging around. Well, we could simplify this a little bit since we're just multiplying stuff together. Put the 3 on top, the 8 natural log of 5 on the bottom, still times your original with a plus c. On this problem here, we have variables on top and variables on the bottom. You're probably going to have to use a u. You could use this as a u, or you could go 1 over x squared as u. Well, typically you want u to be the higher exponent. Well, this is a 3 to the negative, or 3x to the negative 1, which is a higher exponent than this down here, which is an x to the negative 2. So if we did our derivative of this, we would get this with a dx hanging out by it. Now, when you look at your problem, you have your top times a 1 over x squared dx. Hmm. As we look here, this is helping us, but we don't want that negative 3 hanging around because we don't have a negative 3 in our problem. So multiply both sides by negative 1 third. And so what we have here in blue matches what we have over here in blue. So if we rewrite this in terms of u, we'll go 7 to the u because that red is your u. Instead of writing the blue, we're going to do that negative 1 third to u. And now you just have a negative one-third times this. Since you're timesing by negative one-third, you could pull that in front. Now you're just integrating 7 to the u. Well, that's pretty easy to do. We'll leave our negative one-third in front. Remember, when you're integrating 7 to a variable, you have to go 1 over the natural log of your base, still with your original function, and a plus c. So now all you want to do is take and substitute in what u is. If you wanted, you could take what u is and put it up on top. If you also wanted, you could take your 3, which is in front of your log, put it up on the 7. 
and then work out whatever seven cubed is. But what we have here is also perfectly fine. And here we have a snowman in a blizzard hanging out with an albino squirrel. <laughs>